Okay, to set up your LibGuide, you need to create a LibGuides account. You should have received an email uh, looking something like this, welcoming you to LibGuides. Your username is your email address that this was sent to. Um, and the first thing you're going to have to do is set up a new password. Once you're signed in, you'll be at the LibApps home and look for the LibGuides link under the admin interface. Clicking on that will take you to the LibGuides homepage where you can click on Create Guide and get started. You'll choose a layout. You're going to copy a template because I made a template for you. Uh, copy content, local guides, and then click my, type my name, Becker, and look for Template for Using OneSearch by Baron Becker. That's letting you know, it's telling you that you're going to be using a copy of what I've provided. Please remember to click the box next to copy assets. So that means the material from the template will then become yours once you carry it over to your guide. You've got to click copy assets. You'll be able to give your guide a name and you can do that here. You'll also be able to do it um, at, a, at a later stage. In this case, how to search OneSearch, how to use OneSearch. Um, guide type, you really don't have to mess with that. There's just like different versions. Um, you'll leave this for general purpose. Under group assignment, look for info 254 Becker and then click create. And you have your first loop guide. Now that you've created your guide, whenever you sign back in, um, you'll see the same home page, but go to the, your libguides. Now, instead of creating a guide, below that, you're going to edit an existing guide, and there's that guide we just created, how to use OneSearch. It will, everything you create will be located there. So I've created this template for you. You don't have to use it, but feel free to. Um, you can always change the title of the guide just by clicking on the title. Um, you know, just you don't want it to be too long, uh, but obviously descriptive. And under that, you want to write just a quick, uh, quick description of, of the guide, what it is, you know, how to search OneSearch, tips for using OneSearch, I don't know, uh, you know just whatever, whatever you like. So the basics of LibGuides is that um, a LibGuide is just made of pages, and every page has at least one box of content. Um, so what I have set up for you here, you can see the nav bar is on the left. Um, and each one of these links takes you to a page in the LibGuide. And again, each one of those pages has uh, a content box. You can change the title of the content box by clicking on the edit in the menu bar. Um, and you can change the name of the box. And you'll need to do that for all of yours, uh, especially if you use my template. Now to change the content that's in the box, you'll click on the edit at the bottom and you'll see you're editing it just like uh, kind of a Word document. It's called WYSIWYG, what you see is what you get. Um, and that's where you are uh, going to you know, put your videos and your text. Um, and you'll, you'll use it just like a, a Word document. So now on the links on the left, you'll see that you need to rename the page. So tip one. So click on the page you want to rename and you're there. And then there's that page icon gears up at the, up in that gray bar. Uh, you can click on that and you can change the page name. So that's the, when you're changing the page name, that's what you're going to change in the navigation bar as well. So I called this page basic searching. Okay, the way I have it set up for you in this template um, is that each tip will get its own page, right? So you have to create 10 tips um, and you can see tip one, tip two, I created a page for, for every tip. Uh, you don't necessarily have to follow that format. I mean, the requirement is that you have 10 videos, 10 tips. Um, it's also possible that you can put two tips in one page. So for example, I was calling this one basic searching. Um, actually, I'm changing it to catalog searching. You can add extra content boxes by just clicking on this link at the bottom. 
um, and create a new box. So here gives me a chance to create a new name for the box and click OK. Then you've got to tell it what type of box it's going to be. Um, and you'll do that with this Add Reorder option. Click that, and what you want to do is select the Rich Text HTML option. And now you have your new content box. Right? Save and close, and it pops up here. If you want to delete a box, just look for the X in the box's menu bar, click it, understand that it's deleted forever, and click Done. So each of your content boxes uh, needs to have three things. A couple lines at the beginning that introduce what the tip is, kind of explain what it is, um, why it's important. Then I would say under that, um, I would put the video itself. And then below the video, you can put the steps that you're carrying out in the video. Right? You're walking them through not only narrating, but then also giving them the written instructions. Um, within each box, there's a lot of formatting options, just like a Word document. You know, you can change the font, uh, the size. It's all pretty, uh, pretty intuitive. So you're going to need to know how to uh, embed a video into your LibGuide. Go to the video that you want to embed. This will be one of your tips. Click on the Share button. You're probably used to sharing the web address, but that's not what you're going to do now. You're going to click on Embed, and you're going to get the embed code. And all you have to do is click on Copy down at the bottom, and we're going to paste this into the content box back at the LibGuide. So to go to the content box that you want to add the video to and click on the Edit icon. So I wish you could just copy and paste the code right there, but actually you have to click Source. And then you have to paste the code into the source. Usually I just first drop it down at the bottom and just paste it there. Um, and then you can go back and add text above it and below it. It doesn't have to stay at the bottom of your box, but it's just easier when you're pasting the code to put it there. Um, you can do a little bit of edits. Uh, go back to the editing. You can find it, the video, and if you click on it, um, you can like click the center uh, feature and center it. Um, and like I said, it doesn't have to stay at the bottom of the box. You know, I think you should have text under it as well. While you're creating and making edits to your LibGuide, you're going to constantly want to just check to see what it looks like um, on the viewer's end, um, and that's the preview button. So up in the top right, you'll see the little eyeball icon. If you click on that, um, you'll be able to see what the LibGuide looks like uh, from the user end. Since we're using the iSchool LibGuides, um, that's why they're branded like that. We can't change that. Um, those are just, those are set. Make sure to click on all of your embedded videos before you turn this in, uh, just making sure that everything loads and plays correctly. Embedding links is pretty straightforward. Here I'm going to provide a link directly to the JSTOR database. You just highlight the text, click the link icon, and paste your URL into the appropriate box, and you'll see that the links are working. Now something about that is, You'll notice that when I clicked on the link, it actually opened the link within the window that I was looking at the LibGuide. Um, so what you can actually do is edit that link. And under Target, it's the tab to the right. You can say Target New Window. So that means when someone, and click OK, and then when someone clicks on the link, um, it'll open up in a new tab instead of replacing the content that's on the screen with the LibGuide. Um, and that's helpful because then people don't have to keep hitting the back button. The only thing I don't like about LibGuides is the extra steps it takes to embed a picture. So go into your content box, put your cursor where you want to see the image, and then click on the image icon. What you have to do is actually upload the image into LibGuides first. So you click on Browse Server and then upload your image. So again, you have to put your images into LibGuides and then embed it from there. 
after you upload your image uh, under the server, you want to add alternate text. That's for accessibility. Alternate text just describes what's in the image. Click OK and uh, you're set. You can't do too much editing with that. Um, I, I think you can do it from the source code. I don't get that deep into it. Uh, but I, I did have trouble like centering it. I didn't get that option like I did with the videos um, to like highlight it and then click the centering um, uh, button. You can change like the sizes. Uh, you can turn it into a link um, in those options. Uh, but the easiest way is just uploading it and it'll kind of be flush left. LibGuides does have some color and view optimizations. If you click on the little uh, square image up at the top in that menu bar, there's something called tab and options. You can change the colors and the shape of the tabs, which are the names of those things on the left, uh, the navigation links tabs. And then the box is going to be your content boxes. You can change the border width, the color, the background, the header, the font, color. Um, so it's pretty cool, but you can come up with some pretty gross combinations. So keep that in mind. Uh, you don't want to do anything too gaudy. Uh, remember, presentation is part of, of quality of, <laughs> of the content. So just keep that in mind. You, what's something that is cool is that you can change the tabs. It's called under active background. You can change the color of the tab that you're hovering over and of the page that you're on. So that's pretty neat. To undo anything, just go to the tab and options menu and then click revert to default and that get ri gets rid of everything. So wrapping things up, I just realized one thing I forgot to demonstrate was going back to that thing. Let's say, you know, you have these 10 videos, but you want to put two videos per page. So you'd only need five pages to get rid of one of these. Just click on the link or the navigation button. So now I'm looking at the tip 10 page up here under page. You can delete page. If you have multiple boxes, this is what you'll use to reorder things. Um, and you can reorder the pages, uh, for example, on what, uh, you know, you can embed them under their own tabs. So I moved those around uh, just in case you need to do that. That's reorder pages. To get rid of a page, just delete page. When you do that, it is temp uh, permanent. And when you're finished, uh, you can make custom URLs by clicking on URL. Um, and entering the, the final parts of the web's address that you want. Otherwise, it's just numbers, but you know, put your name, one search, that would be helpful. And then that is your, that's the address that you'll share with me um, so that I can see it. You do have to publish it. So by default, yours will be, look like this, unpublished. You have to click on that, change status, and put it to Published and click Save. Now, this link will open up and uh, it should show you exactly what the page looks like. So remember to do that. Remember to preview and look at each of your pages when you're done just to make sure that, that everything's um, working, that all any links work and all your videos run properly.